Hello peoples, welcome to the Stoke Bloke Show. I'm Martin Lynch and today's show is a preview show and I am the Stoked Bloke. Joining me in the studio, Peter P.K. King, who has made this whole thing happen, mate. Ah, oh, no worries. You're a legend and the uh, New Earth Project and the Pipeline Studios it wouldn't happen without you guys, so thanks so much for supporting this old fella. <laughs> and giving us a chance to look at the final five for the WSL's world title showdown, possibly tomorrow, uh, at least between the 8th and the 16th. They're on a yellow alert as we speak, so what that's pretty What does yellow excellent. alert mean? Yellow alert means, hey, let's get your attention early in the waiting period, connect with the audience and have that opportunity to go, oh, well, it didn't quite happen. If it happens, at least you've sort of reached out and you've got them on standby because... In my mind, I wasn't expecting it to happen on the first day of the period. It's weird because it's a one-day event. Yeah, so you could, oh, I didn't see it, and it's done. And then I heard there's that potential for onshore winds as well, which might be one of the reasons that it, it may not run Thursday, Friday. Wow. But if it does, we'll be watching it. We'll be doing some Instagram lives of the event. We're going to have a viewing party. Get some mates together. We're going to watch it, and we're going to uh, share our thoughts with you guys. So you've got... Uh, that is an alternative to tune into. But again, we're all about supporting the sport. It's an exciting time. No matter how you feel about a final five, and we've talked mid-year cuts and all the things that you know we think are controversial, um, the reality is that it's an exciting time and someone's going to be crowned a world champion. Have we been getting any feedback, Martin? We have. And I'll get that to that. Let's have a look at this feedback. Um, piles and piles of feedback, people. All just positive messages from people around the world stoked on what we're doing and connecting with us. And, and this, in particular, is one that, that really got my heart. Blast Off is an event that I started in 2006. And, PK, you were there at the very first one. We've been actively engaged in, in promoting and inspiring kids since that point in time and perhaps even before that, but in this formalised Blast Off way. And I I got this message from Dom Thomas and he goes hey there Barton Dom Thomas here I just wanted to let you know that 12 years ago at Merritt's restaurant in Threadbow which is a ski resort in New South Wales Australia when I was five years old and after shaking the hand of a surfing world champion me you asked me if I wanted to compete in your comp BL's blast off well four years ago I won the 14s at the BL's I just wanted to let you know that I just won the under-18s New South Wales state surfing titles at Sandham Point. Congratulations, Dom. That's cool. That's so cool, hey? To have that connection with kids from, you know, you know, five years old, meeting them at a restaurant at the snow, telling them about your event. It's the first event they ever do. They go on through that event to win the 14s, and then four years after that, they're winning the under-18 state title. It's a beautiful thing. And he says, I still watch your Instagram and learn from your advice. Thanks for your wisdom that you share, and thank you for being such a great role model. Thanks again, Dom. Wow. It makes me, you know, choke up and tear up because it's, that's, that's, that's cool. why, mate. You know, that's why you do these things because you get the opportunity to, to influence and contribute. And we hope that in the same way this podcast brings that same, you know, inspiration to people. So how old is he now? Uh, 18. 18. He lives in Sydney? Yeah. Is he coming to Hawaii this winter? Can he be on your podcast? He, if he's coming to Hawaii, we should invite do him that. on. Absolutely. Let Even if we just Zoomed him in or something and connected with him and, and see, hear the okay. story from himself. The great thing is, is that kids have grown up with that dream called Italo Ferreira in a less than fortunate financial situation, a less than fortunate family situation, whatever it is. And those kids who have got that thing and that it means that much to them they make it happen. And today we're going to catch up on the show with one of those kids, being the great, the goat, the one and only Kelly Slater is going to join us and we'll ask him what he thinks about this final five. But uh, Dom Thomas, we're going to follow him up and let's dive into this final five and how we're going to look at this today. Why, this did, is, I get, why did I get one of these? This is not gambling. What PK and I are going to do today as a way of, and means of scientifically or more scientifically than just having an opinion, we're going to look at the finalists in the male and female field. We're going to judge them in a few categories. And if you wanted to do this with us, you could pause this podcast right now and create a sheet like this, where you've got the names of the surfers at the top, 
We've then got the total, which we'll get to later underneath that, so it's easy to correlate. Then we've got just surfing, and we're going to score them 1 to 10 just on their surfing and what that surfing is you know, to us in terms of this event. Their competitive skill set, 1 to 10. One, they're an absolute rubberneck who loses priority without catching waves all the time, has no idea what they're doing, catches the worst waves out there and argues with the judges for getting threes. I'm right here. <laughs> you don't have to <laughs> don't, don't think personal. <laughs> um, headstrong is those with the strongest minds and who we feel are infallible in this situation. Then we've got flair and air and the people who take it to that next level. And then we've got a location advantage. So let's go, PK. Felipe, let's just, you put yours in. Okay. And do, I'll put mine do, in. Do, do, Felipe. Do, 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 Robbo. Okay. Ethan. Just surfing. Just surfing. And the potential of that surfing, where it can come in, what it could do for those guys. And then we'll look at it one, one at a time. So... These numbers are pretty high. Well, they should be high. They're the five best surfers in the world. Yeah. Um, so, Felipe, where'd you go? Ten. Ten. Robbo? Nine. Nine. Ethan? Nine. Oh, I went seven, five. Italo? No, I went down, I went down two. Italo's a ten and uh, Kanoa's a nine. Okay, let's go competitive skill set. Same. Just based on what I know. Mm. Wow, mm. that's interesting. Okay, competitive skill set, Felipe. I went an eight. Eight. Righto. Robbo. Ten. I went a nine. So you know, we both so, went up. He's so good now at this. He is so dedicated, yeah. he's so committed, he is living in it. Yep. Completely in it. And that's why we both went up from Felipe, who is vulnerable, vulnerable. In, in, in competitive situations of yeah. pressure. At home in Brazil, maybe not, because it's lifting you up. Yeah. It's somewhere else it may... We'll see. Yeah. Um, Ethan. Eight. I gave him an eight. Two. Italo. Nine. Nine. Two. Kanoa. Ten. Whoa. Kids fierce. I stayed on nine and That's he fine. is and I can understand that. Yeah. That makes sense. I can understand yeah. that and see why because he has that ninja warrior mentality where he'll, he could, you know, he could use that. He's a very mentally strong. Strong guy. Let's go to headstrong. Headstrong. Are we doing point fives? Yeah, you can do point fives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can do point fives. I'll just see if I'm close to you. Felipe, 6.5. Yeah, I went eight. Yeah, just I that, went but really I could well. no, but I can and I know I can understand that, you know, Robbo. Nine five. Ten. All right, flare and air. I went Felipe a ten. Twelve. Yes, good job. <laughs> <laughs> Robbo. Seven. I went nine. Yeah. Ethan. Seven. Six. Yeah. Italo. Ten. ten. Kanoa. Nine. I went eight five. I went eight. Sorry, I went eight. You went eight. Yeah, I went eight five. So a little up there too. So again, we can see that when it comes to the just the surfing and the flare and the airs, that that basic physical performance from Felipe and Italo has them as our favourites. You know, this would be very helpful if someone was gambling. Yes. Oh well, well. You know, yeah. we, we're we're here to you know to to offer advice. <laughs> If that's your thing. Okay, we go to location advantage, and this is where those the surfer has an advantage. If we were, and, and for example, we'll get to that. I think this wave suits all these guys. You know, there's not going to be a crowd that they have to fight with, but you got to look at reps put in and how much time they've spent there. And yeah. I mean, Felipe knows this wave inside out. Yeah. Um, this Felipe, location, this format is a gift to Felipe Toledo. And that's where I come to, too. I've got location advantage as a 10. 10. For Robbo, I go to a 7.5. 8. Yeah. And, and you imagine we were at Pipeline. It would be completely the opposite. In 7.5, I would flip that thing, you know. So, so the location in this particular instance, rather than being a whole year's touring, yes. has a big, big influence. Ethan Ewing, 7.5. 8.5. Italo, 9. 10. And Kanoa, nine. Nine. What level, out of 0% to 100%, do they need to be at of their performance potential to win? Felipe only has to be 90. The rest have to be 100. I had Felipe at 80. 80 would And win. the rest is... And, and 80 is enough yeah. to win in my eyes. And you've got him at 90. So the, the test worked. It gave us some good direction in terms of our understanding of the deficiencies of certain people. So that's exciting, mate. We both came to the same conclusions. We're at the same place. We feel like Felipe could, is the only person okay, who could call. win that thing without being at his best. Right. Which is a great situation to find yourself. 
should be a little. Hey, mate. Oh, look at this guy. Hey, look at you. Final day thoughts. I'm, I'm a little bit in two minds about it because the, the traditional, the traditionalist and the uh, uh, surf competitor in me is a guy who surfed all year to win world titles. And it was the combination, the culmination of all those points at the end of the year. Right. Um, so in terms of how they make a world champion, I, I don't know about, I, I don't know whether it's the best to come to one final day and have it at one spot that may favor a certain type of person surfing. Um, there's nothing dangerous. There's nothing hollow about trestles, but I think everyone loves lowers. It's a great wave. I think it's, I personally think it's one of the best performance waves consistently in the world. Um, but it, it doesn't have those really big, huge impact sections, but it just, you can do kind of most of everything you can do on that wave. You can do big airs on the left. So you can do great carves and linking variety combination of, of turns on the right. Um, pretty complete overall type of surfing. Um, it just doesn't bring in that fear factor like a chopu or pipeline or cloud break. Um, and, uh, you know, generally one way or the other, if the swell's got a little bit of west, the, the lefts are kind of more steep. If it's a little more south, the right's can be good. But if it's too south, it runs off. Um, the swells have been a little broken up the last few days. I surfed out there a couple times, but uh, it has definitely been fun. There were some great quality rides yesterday. Um, but it, it's been a little bit flat. The face of the wave has been a little bit flat. So what do I think about the finals? In essence, like two ways. I, I don't know whether it's the fairest way to finish or not after you've surfed a whole year of competition. I'm um, going to one spot, but that being said, <clears throat> the higher seeds having the advantage with the handicapping of the lower seeds having to battle and lo use their energy. It, it really does uh, tip the scale in favor of the number one guy. And, um, I was, I was pleased with Gabriel winning last year cause he had such a great year and it was his year to lose. And I, I thought it was great that he performed on the day and won it, you know, and he did it on lefts. He did mm -hmm. huge errors on lefts and that was interesting. Um, uh, I thought, I thought Italo didn't look great last year in that, um, match with him and Felipe. Uh, I, I think Felipe is the best surfer at lower trestles. He's just so fast and dynamic and he has that huge air thing on the left and he, you know, there, there, there's no weakness there. And it really highlights his best surfing. Um, uh, I, I just changing topics a little bit, but, but having to do with the top five is the, the way it ended up with Kanoa getting in was unbelievable. I was surfing with Keanu yesterday, his, his little brother. And I was saying, how crazy is it what your brother did? Like no one sees him as a barrel guy. You know, there's a, there's a lot of eyes and pressure on him when it's a Chopo or pipeline. And he stepped up and had to ride a, a sick wave from super deep to make the top, top five after Griffin lost. Had he not won that heat, Miguel, I think, would have snuck into the top five spot with that win. Amazing. Didn't know that. behind. Yeah. And um, no one even had Miguel in the conversation. And so those – say what you will about the cut. Say what you will about the final five. But those things that happen because of that I think are really exciting. I think that Margaret River event, the waves were dog shit, and it was, it was a really tough event to be in. It was not fun um, with the conditions we had. We had a lot of southwest wind, a lot of onshore, crummy conditions. The, the days where the size was right, it was choppy. The days where it was, we were running when it was like 12, 15 feet that one day, and it, it was just, it was just basically big giant closeouts, and you try to sneak in and get one that didn't close out and see if you could do a turn or two. Um, <clears throat> super hard conditions, but to have the cut and to see guys like McGillivray step up and in like. I don't know, just a couple minutes, turn his heat and make the, make the cut. Those are like hero moments for people, you know. They, the pressure's on and they got to do it. And they, some people just trust in themselves and make it happen. I think Isabella Nichols did the same Came on the women's side. There's a lot of things we can, we can probably debate about the cuts in the top five and all that kind of stuff. And I typically can see the benefit of both ways happening and, and the challenges and, the, and the, the goods and bads on each side. Mm -hmm.
And in the end, it doesn't matter, right? There's going to be a champion decided. They don't, you don't make the rules as a surfer. They tell you what the rules are. And so you go out and yeah. surf to them. And in the end, the best surfer wins. And out of commitment and dedication throughout a career, you figure it all comes out in the wash and you get your just desserts somewhere along the line. And for me, PK and Kel, I feel like, when I watch this generation, right, it's exactly like of Brazilians, it's exactly like the Australian generation of the 80s, where it mm. was such a, you know, the sport's booming in our country. We all become household names. There's so many of us challenging for world titles and Tom Carroll, Oki, Damien Hardman, myself, we all get one. And I look at this generation of Brazilians and they're living the exact same moment but a few decades later. We're in their country, it's booming, their household names. Adriano's had one, Gabriel's had one, Italo's had one. And I look at Felipe getting one and go, well, it feels right to me. Fixes, you know, everyone gets their moment. It's a, one of the greatest generations in history and there's something that feels really good to me yeah. about the Felipe storyline, you know. In America, there was this yeah. one guy that kept everyone else from getting those titles, though. Well, maybe those other people didn't. Maybe those other people <laughs> Tom, just didn't want him bad enough. Tom mate. Curran. It was Tom <laughs> Curran, yeah. Uh, I, I was talking about after him. <laughs> uh, but but let, uh, let me show but, you this. Oh, hey. Can you see that? <clears throat> We're, I can, yeah. We're going to get you to do what PK and I just did. This is a little thing I did. So, and we went, you know, one to ten, and we scored each of them. So for just surfing, and we'll whiz through this. Just surfing, Felipe. Yeah, it's ten, obviously. Yeah, Robbo. You know, I haven't seen Robbo <laughs> surf trestles a whole lot. Uh, honestly, I haven't seen him surf trestles. I've seen some highlights this week, and I've seen some good moments. Mm. But um. I, I personally think that his carving is the weakest part of his surfing. Um, I, I, I think I've been kind of critical of it, but I love Robbo. I, I just love, I love him. You know, he's yeah. like such a good kid. I've known him since he was a little kid, but I think that he needs to open his shoulders more in his turns. Mm. He needs to sequence it out. He needs to, he needs to rotate and then build, build that coil up in his turns. And I honestly, I think that, I personally think that that would make his surfing better immediately. Um, he tends to keep his shoulder line on the same as his board, and he just compresses and doesn't rotate so much. But amazing. Um, but you know, I've never beaten him, and um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and you can't and, say and, that and about many the, people. And I'm not, and I'm not in the top five, you know. Yeah. Um, but but that's that's my critique of just just his face surfing. Mm -hmm. I, I think it has improved. Yeah. But um. Almost like Felipe, we were super critical of Felipe, one of the best, best guys in the world, probably the best small wave surfer that we've ever seen, and we've been super critical of him over the years on his carving, and, and it's really come to life the past couple of years, past few seasons. You know, winning totally. J-Bay, um, showing, showing that big open face turning, and Jack's got a ton of power, but I just think he needs to rotate the shoulders a bit more into his turn. Between 1 and 10 on, he's just his surfing as, as an asset to his overall. Just surfing overall. Yeah. And time out, does, is that in relation to lowers or everything? No, no, we have that as location advantage. This is just in general, just surfing on its own. Okay, gotcha, 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 yeah. I mean, he's like an eight or a nine. Yeah, well, right that's there. what we had. We had but an... It's also like, are we doing top-level pros out of ten? Or, we do, or yeah. like, are you automatically yeah. like a seven and up because you're on tour? Well, if we went just surfing, for me, you go, well, John John's a ten. Gab's a 10, you, you're, you know what I mean? And then you can work your way from there. Um, Ethan Ewing? Ethan, uh, oh, just as, as a surfer? Yeah. I just think, I think um, he does have an air game. I don't know a lot about his barrel game, but uh, Ethan's probably my favorite surfer right now. <laughs> Isn't I mean, it amazing? Right, yeah. He, He's right. He's right there. His carved game is the best in the world, in my opinion, right now. Probably going that like eight or nine zone. Italo. Italo. I mean, he's he's got it all. He's got it he's, all. He's, he's a ten, isn't he? When he's, he's on. He's as good as anyone in the world. That guy. I, you know, he wins at pipeline. He wins at small beach breaks on his forehand, on his backhand. Um, it, it's hard to fault anything that Italo does, and I think for kids. I think for kids, he's as exciting as anyone because he just always having fun, giving his boards away. Like the guy's just so cool, you know. And he's he's serious in his heats, but he's really 
um, like a fun, happy dude, and he's more outgoing than like Gabriel. Um, you know, he's more of like a, a people person. Yeah. Um, so like the kids really love him, and I I've, I find him really refreshing. Yeah, I feel exactly the same. And if he can connect that line on those rights at lowers and find them sections for those big backhand Hail Marys and get them into groove, he could go all the way even from way yeah. back there because he might only need two of them a heat to get through. That's true, but I think in order to do that, he probably has to go left. Right. I just don't think he's going to find that on those rights because Italo tends to kind of telegraph his his errors. Mm -hmm. I mean, he could throw him in the... He could barely be doing a turn to throw a huge error. Yeah. But that right doesn't stand up so steep to do the big air. Um, and the wind a lot of times is coming down the line with you. So it doesn't stick the board here. And he, yeah, and he yeah. doesn't grab yeah. backhand. He doesn't do grab yeah. rail backhand airs on the right. You got to surf the face. And I really give the huge advantage there to, to Felipe and then Ethan, I would mm -hmm. have a number two mm -hmm. in the, in the bunch. Yeah. On the um, rights and on the face, on the right, on yeah. the right, on the face. Yeah. yeah. Okay, are you happy and willing to pick yourself? Like a, a winner for both the men's and the women. If you had to pick one, where would you go? Oh, if I had to bet, I would go Felipe. Um, and I would go Carissa. Um, Carissa is just so solid day in, day out consistently. And it looks, I, I haven't looked at the forecast the last couple of days, but there's going to be, there could be this like hurricane influence with some energy, extra energy and size. The waves today, I just looked at it now as four or five feet mm -hmm. solid, really good lines. Like today would have been an amazing day to run the event. I'm guessing we'll have something close to that tomorrow, but you know, I would really love personally to see Steph make a run and get to that final. Uh, I also wouldn't mind seeing that top D Carissa battle again because it was a close one last year and one move away on a mm -hmm. couple waves where she fell that it was a world title in a grasp. Do you have the, do you have the list right there from yeah. five to one yeah. in, in order? Steph and Brees are first up. Okay. Yeah. I, I give I, I give Steph a slight advantage. Uh, the winner meeting Tachi. That's a good heat. That really depends. Tachi is more go for it. If But if, you know, if that's one of those heats that real test, real test for Steph, Mm. If she can stick to her guns and look confident and link it all, she has that flow that Tati doesn't have, but Tati has the bigger maneuvers. Then the winner goes Joanne. Joanne is the one, I think she's the dark horse. She's so good and waves a bit of power. She kind of got that back foot power thing, and in the last few years, she's really learned how to link all her turns together so well. Yeah, then the winner obviously yeah. against Carissa, and being number one seed and having the best of three... What an advantage because, you know, second, you've only got the one chance, right? One heat, Robbo, Joanne, whoever you get, built some momentum with some wins. That almost feels like the worst place to be. If you could choose, you know, where you would come in as a seed, would you have a preference or just take whatever Mother Nature threw at you? You'd, you'd want to be first, but you want to be top two. I, I just think as number two, you bring, make yourself susceptible that one heat, the pressure builds up. For me, going into that final three heats, I'm much more relaxed in that first heat. Yeah. Way more relaxed, no matter which position I'm in. Um, but if you're already there, you're going to be more relaxed. You just – I don't know whether you want to watch everyone surf before or not. Yeah, yeah, good point. Um, to, to see which waves they're taking, how they're surfing them, if you can better what they're doing or you just play your own game, that's a, that's a whole other thing, you know, kind of mm -hmm. like – I guess watching the leaderboard when you're in a golf tournament. I want to see your list. I want to see your guys' list of uh, scoring. Oh, really I, de close. I definitely agree with your. Uh, I definitely agree with your headstrong Rob. I think he is the most headstrong competitor on the tour right now, for sure. Um, what's behind? What's below headstrong? What's flare, flare and air. I think you went low ball on Ethan there. <laughs> I mean, because here's the thing Ethan has a lot of different angle varieties off the bottom and mm. off the top but we will see like how much can he make those turns look different turn to turn on a sort of flatter wave as opposed to like Jay Jay Bay was more power and pockety mm. whereas out here is going to be a little bit flatter let's see advantage location advantage yeah Kanoa I, I, I would go a little lower on Italo personally because I, I just I haven't seen Italo like really surf his best at lowers before it for some reason it it feels like it avoids him a little bit. Um, and then what's the last one? It's gone a little bit. Um, what, what level they need to be at of their potential? Do they have to be at 100% mm. to win? Or, you know, what do you think? 
Like the, we, gotcha, yeah. We both felt like Felipe didn't need to be at 100% to most probably win. No. <clears throat> I, I, I would probably agree with you there. He could still beat any of those guys 100% at 80% because his 80% is making everything. Robbo's won so many clutch heats and made the right decisions. Like, unbelievable amount of good decisions. One time after another after another. And the only time I saw him make a mistake was at Chopo. And I told him after, I said, it's the only mistake you've made all year. And somehow Hedgy capitalized on it. Kanoa is really the kind of X factor in this thing. He's so fast and he throws so much spray. And if he starts surfing like he did at Karamas the other year, then those guys are going to have to watch out because he could have a long day with a bunch of wins. Imagine being his manager if he does that and then going to Japan and signing deals. <laughs> oh, yeah, always thinking, always thinking ahead. All right, brother, thank you so much, mate. When you're back here in Hawaii, we'd love to get you in the studio and have a deeper conversation and take it in some different, different, different directions. We've had a, uh, there's a lot of water under those bridges and there's a lot of amazing things I'd like to, to open up and share with you and, and get your opinion on. Yeah, you and I could probably do about 10 straight hours, I bet. <laughs> split it up. <laughs> bore, bore the shit out of people. All right, brother. We All love right. you. Appreciate you and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah, talk to you guys soon. Bye, Later. mate. Bye. He's a talkative lad. You know what I mean? Isn't he? For a champ, he doesn't sort of coil back and, you know, react in that strange way. It's, uh, he's, he's such a... He's not afraid a... to speak his mind. No, he's not afraid to speak his mind. He's not afraid to share himself. He's not afraid to open up. And he's been on a journey to, of self-discovery to become the greatest surfer of all time and to watch a young man from the start of that thing, someone you heard about like you heard about John John Florence, and to watch him follow through for so many decades and have surfed heats against myself and gone through all of those different generations and still to be so relevant is... Uh, is such a tribute. So I suppose, folks, with the WSL finals coming up, the WSL, I got home yesterday and this was in, in the living room. My son Lion had opened it up because he was sure it was for he. Um, and we got this wonderful little banner which says uh, your name on it, the world champion, 1988, and where you were from. They got the year right. They got the year right. And it came with a lovely little card that uh, said, as we prepare for this year, we want you to know that this year and every year, WSL is proud to celebrate you. The men and women who have defined the sport of surfing over the past five decades. So, lovely memento. I think last year I received a jacket. We got these jackets sent to us. So, it's nice that they remember you and that, that they honour the world champions and... Um, I'm very grateful for this. Personally, just a quickie, I don't care who wins. To me, I don't care any, any of them stories, any of those five males and females, I would be stoked to see them win. So you're not managing or have a vested interest in any of them winning? I have no vested interest in any of them winning or anything that happens um, besides the pure thrill of watching great sport and young people achieve their dreams. So it's going to be a great one. Thank you.